Hey, what's up everybody? It's Cody with Blood Money MMA Bets and I'm back with another prediction video. This week I'm going to be breaking down UFC Vegas 59, Jamal Hill versus Tiago Santos, man. This is going to be a decent card. It's got some really sketchy fights on it though. Really sketchy betting spots. There's only a couple fighters on this card you can really feel uh, good about putting a bet on, feel real confident. We're going to do a quick recap of UFC 277 then we'll get right into this uh, 59 card. 277, I killed it. Went 5-0. Plus 9.1 units. My units are $100, so I went 910 bucks yesterday, and it was awesome, man. That card went perfectly smooth. My five winning bets, my first winning bet was Mays Hamdi over 1.5 rounds. And, man, that fight was greasy, but came through um, a couple times in the first and the second round where both guys were hurt at different points. Still made it through, so that was a nice bet. Second winning bet was Alexander Pantoja, man. Um, he looked good, dude. He came out, shirt off, man on a mission, came out, um, took the back, got the choke out with the, well, I mean, it was more of like a, a pain move than a choke out. He wasn't under the chin, but that was awesome. Third winning bet, Sergey Pavlovich. Man, um, he came out hard too on Derek Lewis. It was an early stoppage, definitely, but um, Lewis did fall, like fold to the ground like he was done. And then, you know, he started getting back up once the ref stopped it, but he took a beating really quick, but you know, who knows, early stoppage, I'm not sure. Fourth winning bet, Ankaliyev Moreno parlay. Um, that was a that was a the Moreno fight. The Ankaliyev fight was easy. The Moreno fight was tough, man. It looked like Kai Car France was starting to come back. He had busted Moreno open, but got that win, man. Hit him with that crazy liver kick. Fifth winning bet was Ankaliyev close, man. Um, I I parlayed Ankaliyev and I I used him as an anchor in two parlays because man, I thought he was a lock and he was, man. Uh, he beat Anthony Smith up bad in that second round. So yeah, man, five and zero. Oh. Plus, plus 9.1 units. You got to call me Mr. Pay-Per-View from here on out, man. I've hit every pay-per-view I've ever bet on on, on my shows and everything. So, um, yeah, but 5-0, uh, and oh, man, that brings my official bet record to 131 and 92 for plus 47.95 units, man. And, um, yeah, I needed that week. After a couple weeks ago, I'm, I've won the last four out of five weeks. My only losing week was UFC Long Island, man, and that was a tough one. But, um, obviously, we got all that back and more in these last couple weeks. So, um, let's get right into this UFC Vegas 59 card. Um, like I said, decent but sketchy fights. Fight number one's in the women's bantamweight division. We got Myra Boino Silva versus Stephanie Edgar. My, Myra Boino Silva is 8-2-1, and one, currently sitting at minus 115. Stephanie Edgar is 7-2, and two, currently sitting at minus 115. And, um... It's going to be a good girls fight. Both these girls are um, high-level MMA fighters. Maria Bueno Silva has really nice Muay Thai striking. She has really powerful leg kicks. She has nice punches. Um, very powerful, though. And everything she does, she's very mean and very aggressive. She has a really good clinch with knees in the clinch. Um, but she can be taken down and she can be held down. She does have a decent um, submission game off her back. But uh, for the most part, if them don't work, she can be held down. She was taken down by uh, Marina Moraes. Marina Marais, sorry. Um, but yeah, man, she's got pretty good takedown defense, but she can be taken down and she can be worn out if she is taken down. Um, good boxing, good power, super mean. Like I said, I like her clinch. I like her knees in the clinch and all that. But Stephanie Edgar, man, is really good. You see her striking's improving. She comes from a judo background. Um, she's got excellent BJJ and submissions, as, you, as, as you've seen. She got uh, Shanna... Um, Shanna something, I forget her name, but uh, got her out of there. And then she got, um, in her last fight, she got, uh, what the heck, um, Jessica Rose Clark out of there really quick. And you've seen how good she is. Actually, if you see her fight Tracy Cortez, she gave Tracy Cortez a really good fight on three days notice. And um, she actually up kicked her and knocked out Cortez for a second. So that was, that was crazy. But um, yeah, man, in this fight, Stephanie Edgar, improving striking. Um, improve. She's got nice leg kicks. She's got pretty decent punches. But like I said, they're improving, and we haven't seen her for a little bit, so I'm sure they've gotten better. Um, really nice BJJ off her back with arm bars. Man, she sets them up in levels, like stages. Like She tricks. She really tricks the girls into going for them. Um, really nice scrambling on the ground to subs. Really good clinch up against the cage with takedowns and judo throws, man. I really like that. Um, I think that's going to be the way she'll be. Traditional takedowns don't work as good against Marina Boino Silva, but I think that hip tosses and these these uh, judo throws are going to work because Boino Silva is really active in the guard, really likes to throw knees, elbows, all that. 
when you throw a knee and get off balance, that's when uh, Stephanie Edgar is going to be able to throw her. But um, she put up a really good fight with Cortez, and I really like that. But um, good ground and pound, and um, has really good cardio and toughness. I, I really like her, and like I said, she she's a judo background. She's got really good BJJ, and her striking's improving every fight. I like Bueno Silva, but I feel like um, she'll grab the cage. You've seen her get a point taken away from her against Mon Montana De La Rosa, so maybe that'll happen here on the takedowns. But um, Stephanie Edgar could take her down and sub her, but she can also get take her down and be able to beat her up from the top she has a nice ground and pound i'm gonna take edgar by decision maybe she hits a submission on moreno bueno silva because like i said bueno silva has decent jujitsu but she comes from a muay thai background so give me stephanie edgar by decision or submission i do have a bet on her um I got her uh, at plus 135. I see she's, you know, it's even money now. She's minus 115, but I got her at plus 135. I have 1.6 units to win 2.15, and I'm pretty happy about that bet. This is going to be a close fight. This fight should be more towards a pick -em. I don't think she should have ever been the underdog, but... Um, yeah, man, I hope that she really comes through. I really think that she can, especially at plus 135. I don't know. I couldn't pass that up. Fight number two is in the women's strawweight division. We got Corey McKenna versus Miranda Granger, and this is like a terrible fight, low-level fight kind of, you know. Corey McKenna, 6-2, currently sitting at minus 235. Miranda Granger, 7-2, currently sitting at plus 195. Um... Off the bat, though, Corey McKenna is 5'3 with a 58.5 inch reach, where Miranda Granger is 5'7 with a um, 68 inch reach. So she has four inches of height and nine and a half inches of reach here. Um, that's a lot of reach, man, especially when Corey McKenna is super small to begin with. Corey McKenna, she's got decent wrestling, you know nothing special um she's got decent striking she's very hittable um she's got pretty good ground and pound that's the best thing about her game that i found when she can get a girl to the ground she does have really good elbows really good ground and pound but um she's just decent everywhere not really great anywhere and then she's super small too so none of that helps miranda granger like i said four inches of height nine and a half inches of reach she has good striking um she actually uh comes from a kickboxing background but she has really good uh jujitsu too um nice striking nice double jab into a, a straight right or overhand right that she can catch girls with um she looked good really good against hannah goldie she does have two losses in the ufc and she hasn't fought for a little bit but her two losses were just way she she fought girls that were way better in her way too early in her career because she was undefeated she was seven and oh and she was seven and oh as amateur so she's like 14 and oh and then they seven and oh after beating hannah goldie they put her in with amanda lamos which is you know tough like amanda lamos what would she do to Corey mckenna and then they put her in with ashley yoder another um skilled vet that had been fighting for a long time and is a big girl and that um yoder would beat up mckenna too I like Granger, dude. She shows good striking, um, especially against another low-level girl like herself. She shows really good striking. She shows a good clinch. She's super strong in the clinch. Um, nice clinch striking and takedown defense. Has good kickboxing. Her striking, gra I, I feel like her striking, her grappling, her, her reach, and um, her size and just her strength is going to keep this fight standing where she's going to be able to beat up McKenna. It's going to be a close fight, but there's no way. I don't see after how you watch Corey McKenna against either either uh, Kay Hansen or her last fight against against um, Elise Reed that she should be minus 235 against any girl in the UFC. That's It's amazing to me. It blows my mind. So uh, Miranda Granger at plus 195, dude, I'm really thinking about betting. I do got my rule of no low-level MMA, but man, to throw like 125 to win, you know, um, 300 or, or, you know, two. 2.5 units, 2.75 units, I might have to do that. I really think, man, that height, size advantage. These girls are pretty even at skill, and then that size advantage should be for Granger. So I'm going to take Granger by sub. Maybe she hits a decision um, when, or a, a submission when uh, Corey McKenna, if Corey McKenna does get her to the ground or tries to take her to the ground, she can pull one off. Next fight is in the men's welterweight division. We got Jason Witt versus Josh Quinlan. Jason Witt is 19 and 8, currently sitting at minus 185. Josh Quinlan's 5 and 0, currently sitting at minus 225. And Jason Witt, man, you've seen him, you've seen him fight in the UFC a lot. Um, if he doesn't get knocked out in the first round, he can he can wrestle, he can cook people, wrestle them, put a lot of pressure on them, wear them out. Um, you've seen him him even um, be able to do that against Brian Barberina, held him down the whole first round, which is tough, and, and was able to actually knock Barberina down and uh, get a lot of control time on him, which you know Brian Barberina is really squirrely. That's hard to do. But Jason Witt, good wrestling, good BJJ and top control. Decent leg kick and body kick. He's got a pretty nice overhand right um, with some power in it. But anytime he's in a striking exchange, man, he's got one of the worst chins ever. Um, he's been KO'd six times and choked twice. All eight of his losses are by finish. Um, and the guy that he is fighting this fight is a finisher, man. Josh Quinlan, this dude's good. He's like a Hawaiian. He's from Maui, I believe. 
super tough, fights like a super tough Hawaiian. He fights like Ray Cooper, man. Um, super aggressive, super tough, really well rounded, um, really fast, really, really aggressive, really powerful, excellent striking, man. Um, really good boxing with speed and power, seemed to have really good takedown defense. Um, good get up game, just seems like an all around fighter. Like, this kid is very explosive, man. Throws power in everything he throws. He has good cardio, even though he does that. He's good takedown defense and BJJ. He's finished all five opponents. He's gone to the third round twice and finished them, so it shows that he's got good cardio. And um, he has had very low level of opposition. I give him that, but he's destroyed him like he should. Um, he's very hittable at times. He can get caught in a war, but he has a really, really, really good chin and um, very tough with good cardio, man. And I'm, I'm definitely going to take this kid. I think that he's going to be able to stop some of the takedowns anyways. He may get taken down once or twice in the first round, but he also may come out like Takashi Soto. Um, or uh, who else was it? I think Matt Semmelsberger and knock him out in the first 35 seconds because Jason Witt's uh, chin is terrible. So I'm taking Josh Quinlan. I'm going to take him by finish. I don't have any bets or anything on him yet, but I, I do like him to get the finish. And he is one guy that I'm looking at. It's another one, you know, he's a Dana White contender series guy, and I would be mad if he came out, if I bet him, you know, put him in a parlay or something, and he did come out and um, get wrestled down for all three rounds. But I don't see that happen. I think this kid's actually really good. I think he's really well-rounded, and I think he's going to get this victory. Next fights in the men's lightweight division. We've got Terrence McKinney versus Eric Gonzalez. Terrence McKinney's 12 and 4, currently sitting at minus 855. Uh, Eric Gonzalez, 14 and 6, currently sitting at plus 530. And man, um, taking Terrence McKinney, first round TKO, man. First round TKO or submission. You've seen with Jim Miller, he was able to knock out Eric Gonzalez, and that's an older Jim Miller that's more of a grappler. He still does have power, but he's not Terrence McKinney um, by any means. Terrence McKinney's a savage. You got him here on a full camp, um, which is dangerous. You know, his last fight he lost to Drew Dober. He took that on like five days' notice against one of the most dangerous guys in the world. We got to we got to respect that and um, let it go, man. The guy got paid, and he almost put Dober out, which is super hard to do. But uh, Terrence McKinney, dude, crazy explosive striking. He's got a. He was going to go wrestle for the Olympics. He tried out for, it, so he's got Olympic level wrestling, dude. Super crazy submissions. Um, some of the craziest flying knees, one, two down the pipe to Frivola, flying knees to uh, Dober, everybody else. I mean, the dude's crazy. He's he's really good. He's got an excellent stiff jab, but he has four minutes of cardio, man. And after that, he's done. But four minutes of cardio is way more than he's going to need for Eric Gonzalez, who has decent rest. He's just decent all around, but um, he's got a loss to Humberto uh, Bondere in the last two years. So, yeah, man, I'm taking Terrence McKinney. There's no value on him right now. I'm taking him my first round TKO. I'd like to see the val the line on that, you know, because I like that. I know the under is like minus 225 for under one and a half rounds. So that's kind of a lot, too. But I don't know, man. I I'm going to look at that fight in some way. But I do, I do, like, uh, I do like McKinney to get that done. T-Rex. Fight number five is in the men's welterweight division. We've got Takashi Sato versus Brian Battle. Takashi Sato is 16 and 5, currently sitting at plus 195. We got Brian Battle, 7 and 1, currently sitting at minus 235. And Takashi Sato, man, good boxing. Um, good power. He has good knockout power. We talked about him knocking out Jason Witt. Uh, finished 13 of his 16 fights, 11 KO, two subs. So this guy goes for the finish at all time. Um terrible wrestling defense you know not terrible but pretty terrible um we've seen the way to beat him like with Bilal Muhammad and a couple other guys Gunnar Nelson you just take him down hold him down he's kind of got terrible takedown defense and terrible get up game um he's really a pressure striker with good power and um and you know good KO uh good KOs in his in, in his career but when he steps up in competition or fights a a, a better grappler He's uh he's he's kind of easy to beat. Um, two low level wins though in the UFC for his career. He's got Jason Witt and Ben Saunders. Them are his two wins, and uh, loses when he steps up. But he does have a big experience edge here with 21 fights to eight. Brian Battle, man, you've seen him on the Ultimate Fighter. Dude is super tough. You've seen him in the Ultimate Fighter finale. Kind of went life and death with Treshawn Gore, which at this point we don't know if that's good or not. Um, fighting at welterweight for the first time he's dropping down a weight to welterweight from 185 man so he's going to be big here he's going to have uh three inches of height and uh four inches of reach on sato he's 6 1 with 77 inch reach sato is 5 10 with the 70 73 inch reach and um yeah man i really like battle here this dude throws a lot of body kicks a lot of front kicks he throws a lot of punches um a lot of one twos just a lot of the stuff you want to see very accurate very nice array of strikes uh very nice front kicks and push kicks to the body and face very active striker always throwing something man really nice inside and outside leg kicks he throws leg kicks with both legs he's good at throwing a, um, a ton of leg and body kicks and then sneaking in a high kick after he gets you thinking about that uh body and head kick I just like him, dude. Dude's got great cardio. He's got a great chin, and this was all at 185. 
Um, so down here, um, I think he's going to look really good at, at welterweight. I think he's got uh, uh, the wrestling advantage here if he chooses to use that. And I think he can strike with Soto, maybe even put Soto out, man, because he hits hard He and he throws a lot of stuff. And he's going to be really good here at uh, 170. Good offensive and defensive wrestling. Showed good jiu-jitsu. Showed a good gas tank when he choked out uh, Andre Petrozelli on the uh, ultimate fighter. Petrozelli was working him for that round and a half. Gassed out. Brian Battle took advantage of it, man. So give me Brian Battle. I'm actually going to take him by decision. And um, I did want to throw him in a parlay with uh with another dude in the main event but um i'm not sure yet man i'm gonna i'm gonna think out some really good bets we're not giving none of that money from last week back to these mofos so fight number six is in the women's flyweight division we got ariana lipsky versus Pr priscilla cachoeira ariana lipsky's 14 and 7 currently sitting at minus 170 priscilla cachoeira is 11 and 4 currently sitting at plus 140 and I'm just going to say it, man. I like Priscilla Cachoeira in this fight a whole lot, man. She's going to have uh, one inch of height here. She's two inches less of reach, but she's going to be the bigger, thicker girl in this fight. Um, Ariane Lipsky, Lipsky, good Muay Thai, um, pretty good active striking and accurate striking in that first round. She's got really good clinch, elbows, and knees. She's pretty mean and aggressive. Um, she can pull off a sub on her back on lower level girls too, but I don't think this fight's going to the ground at all. But um yeah, man, um, I think if this fight stays standing the whole time like it's gonna, I think that Priscilla Cachoeira at first in that first round might start getting pieced up a little bit, you know, um, through uh, pr uh, Ariane Lipsky's technique and speed. But, dude, Ariane Lipsky wears damage terrible. Like, you've seen her against Molly McCain when she stand stayed standing up the whole time. Um, she just got beat up. Like, it it's like in the first round, she's really crisp, but as she's taking damage with her opponent, she starts slowing down. It really shows on her. I mean, especially when she goes to the ground. You see Montana De La Rosa and um, Antonio Shevchenko beat the crap out of her, dude. Finish her twice. She's 3-4 and four in the UFC. And, um, I don't know, man. I'm just not that sold on her. I don't think that she has that much heart. And I think she'll quit when um, the going gets tough. And in this fight, Priscilla Cachoeira, if anything, is going to make this fight tough. Um, she's going to be able to take all of Ariane Lipsky's shots. And she's going to be throwing bombs the whole time. And she's going to be landing them bombs while Lipsky's hitting her with one, two weak little shots. Um, Cachoeira is going to get her backed up against the cage and be throwing bombs. And that, that damage is going to wear up. And I expect her to get a finish in that second or third round. I really love Priscilla Priscilla Cachoeira on this spot. Haven't got a bet on her yet, but when I go to the casino tomorrow night, I am putting the bet on her. Um, not waiting for uh, Tuesday night unless these lines start changing for the better for me because I'm not waiting for no over-unders this week. I hate all the prices on the over-unders. I don't really trust any of them. Do some straight bets. And I'm going to do some of these girl bets like Cachoeira where I don't have to put 240 bucks to win 200 you know what I mean, or two two 2.4 units to win two. I can just put you know 1.5 units to win 2.2.1 so and if i bet granger i can put like 1.2 like i said to win 2.75 and I, I that's a 50 50 fight or better for granger that size advantage is gonna be huge so um i feel like a crazy person right because this week i already want to bet i got a bet on edgar which she was a big female uh mma underdog but that's more high level then this Ariana Lipsky, Priscilla Cachoeira. This is more high level too. I've seen both these girls fight a lot. That's why I got good reads on it. And I'm definitely betting Cachoeira. And then um, with the, the McKenna, man, I, I really like Granger like a lot. So I might have three underdog women MMA bets this week. And it sounds crazy. I'll probably sound crazy. But I'm telling you, man, like these fights are going to be uh, greasy. And none of these girls should be that. Ariana Lipsky shouldn't be minus 170 unless she's fighting Mandy Baum. Ariana Lipsky's wins are terrible in the UFC. The one girl's not even in the UFC. She caught uh, Luana Carolina with a crazy knee bar in like a minute. And um, she was going to get beat up in that fight too. And then um, she uh, she beat up Mandy Bohm. Wow. So, yeah, man, give me a catch wear and I'm all over her. I'm going to bet her. Fight number seven is in the men's middleweight division. We got Michael Mikal Olenjashik versus Sam Alvey. Mikal is 16-5, currently sitting at minus 595. Sam Alvey is 33-17-1, currently sitting at plus 420. And I'm all over Mikal Olenjashik. This fight's going to be a boxing match. Neither one of these guys really throw kicks. And Olenjashik is going to be so fast. And he's dropping down to one middleweight for the first time, which he should have did a long time ago because he's always been good, but he's just always been smaller than all these other uh, light heavyweights that were able to, like, Ovin St. Prue was huge, was able to lean on him, wear him out. Um, Jimmy Cruz, huge, wear him out. He's going to look good down here at middleweight, and they're giving him a very winnable fight. His boxing is crazy. His movement's crazy. He throws excellent body shots. Um, Sam Elvey, 
over the hill. You know, I love Sam Elvey. I love him as a person. But, man, decent boxing. He has excellent takedown defense. That's the only way Mikhail loses this if he goes out there and tries to take uh, Sam Elvey down for the whole first round and gasses out. But that's not going to happen. He's going to box him up. He's going to have so much speed and power on Sam Elvey. Sam Elvey's just been getting finished. I'm not sure why he's still in the UFC. Um, he's lost his last seven fights with a draw mixed in there. So, yeah, man, um, I'm taking Michelle Olin Jacek. Um, he, Sam's been getting finished in that first round, and that trend's going to keep going here. I got Olin Jacek by first round KO. I'd like to see. I don't think that prop will be available for me, but um, I'd like to see. I may look into that. Fight number eight in the men's heavyweight division. We got Augusto Sakai versus Sergey uh, Sergey Spivak. Augusto Sakai is 15, 4, and 1, currently sitting at plus 180. Sergey Spivak is 14 and 3, currently sitting at plus 220. And um, it's gonna be a good heavyweight fight. Um, Augusto Sakai, man, really nice Muay Thai striking. He has really good hands, he throws really straight punches, he'll throw them in combos with power. Um, he has really, really nice kicks, front kicks, push kicks. He's, he's very agile for a big guy. Really nice clinch, really good knees in the clinch. Um, against If he comes out here and fights like Alistair Overeem, he'll, when he fought Alistair Overeem for the first three rounds, he'll look good. He, he showed good takedown defense. He showed really nice knees and stuff in the clinch. Um, and just overall, a good Muay Thai game, but he does not have a good ground game. Once he's taken to the ground, he has no get-up game. He has really good power in his first in, in his right hand, but like I said, man, when he's taken to the ground, he has no get-up game, and he just gets beat up down there. That's what Al uh, Alistair Overeem did to him, and Alistair Overeem is not even a wrestler. Um, if Augusto Sakai can get you up against the cage, he can swarm on you and put you out. He did it against Marcin Tabora, a couple other people. He is good, man. He's got to win over Olowski, but, man, his last three fights, he, he's been um, – taking three bad knockouts you know he was beaten up really bad by Overeem he was knocked out uh by Jaren Zeno Rosenstruck in the first round and then he was knocked out bad by Tai Tuivasa in that second round and um in this fight with Sergey Spivak man he's got decent striking serviceable striking um he can be overwhelmed sometimes by really athletic big guys like Tom Aspinall or Walt Harris but um really good wrestling man i like this guy's wrestling you've seen his last fight with greg hardy excellent hip toss takedowns um he can shoot in double leg takedowns uh, he he has really good timing on that uh excellent ground and pound when he gets people to the ground he's got good top control when he gets people to the ground he holds them down and i really like that excellent body lock takedowns good hip toss takedowns excellent ground and pound really good cardio um Sometimes, like I said, he can be intimidated by these power guys with um, with uh, uh, really explosive KOs. And um, that could easily happen here, man, because Spivak, I don't know about his heart too much. But I really do like Spivak here. I think that um, Augusto Sakai, his heart's been taken in these last three fights. I think his chin's been taken. Um, he didn't look really comfortable against Taito Avasa the whole last fight. I expect uh, Sergey Spivak to come out here. Be able to strike a little bit in the first round. Hopefully he protects himself, doesn't get uh, uh, messed up in that first minute. And then I expect him to be able to land some takedowns, wear on Sakai. And I'm going to take him by a second or third round TKO. Um, I do have him in a parlay with another guy coming up. And um, I really do like him to get the win here. But he has to protect himself. Sakai is very dangerous. And uh, uh, Spivak's been known to get hurt. So, man, it's kind of risky. But I I'm going to take it. I, I kind of like I, I want to see what the over-under is. But... I don't know. I, I guess I would like the under, but who knows? Maybe Spivak just takes him down, holds him down for all three rounds. We'll see. Next fight is in the men's welterweight division. We got Vicente Luque sitting at 21, 8, and 1, currently sitting at minus 170. We got Jeff Neal at 14 and 4, currently sitting at plus 140. And this is the best fight on the card. This um this could be a main event on any other uh, fight night card for sure. Vegas card. It's it's a really good fight. Vicente Luque, dude. Um great everywhere you know he showed terrible takedown defense last fight but he's usually got a decent takedown defense he's got really good bjj he's got uh four dars chokes and one hand in the ufc so you definitely have to watch for that anytime you go to the ground unless you're Bilal muhammad um really nice inside and outside calf kicks he's got a really powerful right hand man he likes to counter with that he can come forward with his own power too but he really likes to uh counter with that right hand um really fast when countering punches too i really like that and he counters with power he's got really heavy hands he's got a lot of knockouts in the ufc but it's also over a lot of lower level competition um he has one of the best chins i've ever seen in mma man this dude has never been finished he has a granite chin he's been hit that's what he does too he's in firefights and he relies on his chin he can take one to give you one and usually you can't survive his super tough super good cardio um but man he's had really close fights with um the kind of subpar type fighters like mike perry um he he that Brian Barberina fight was up in the air, and then he ended up finishing Barberina with like three seconds left in the uh, third round. 
But um, Nico Price, you know, going the second fight, uh, Nico had that really close. So it's like, man, he 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 can. If you don't get that knockout, he can fight really close with kind of lower level fighters. Jeff Neal is good, dude. This dude is so fast and explosive. Um, his left high kick is is crazy. You've seen him hit it, Mike Perry with it, and finish Mike Perry, and nobody finishes Mike Perry. Super fast strike, super explosive grappling too. Offensive and defensive wrestling is good. Um, his jujitsu is good. His ground and pound sick. You've seen him ground and pound out Nico Price. They had a crazy fight, but um, yeah, man, just crazy, crazy fast. Crazy nice fast left straight right down the middle that hurts people and puts people out in a crazy fast left head kick, man. He's got a couple left head kick knocks out, knockouts. Um really powerful ground and pound, very good cardio, super tough. He can be drawn into firefights though and get caught himself. He was dropped against Nico Price. He's been dropped in a couple fights, but um comes back fighting tough. You've seen his last fight against Pazanibio Santiago was a good fight. He ended up showing a lot of toughness. He showed really good cardio in that third round and uh came back and took that from Ponzi, man. Um I just feel like um, he needs to stay out of the firefights with Luke because Luke is going to be more durable than him. But I really like uh, Jeff Neal in this fight to win by decision, man. I think that he could actually land some takedowns on Vicente Luque. I think that he's going to be faster in the striking. He's going to be more explosive. He could actually drop Vicente, man. He, I've seen Vicente get dropped, like I said, never finished. But, man, he's got a crazy fast left head kick. And if they get in a firefight, he can drop Vicente and beat him just as easy as Vicente can to him. And him being a big underdog like that, man, um... I don't know. I just feel like like Jeff Neal destroyed Mike Perry, where Vicente Luque went life and death with, with him. Um, Jeff Neal, you know, destroyed Nico Price, where where uh, Vicente Luque went life and death with him. So it's like some of these fights, man, where uh, Vicente was having tough fights, Jeff Neal was, was destroying these guys. So I'm going to take Jeff Neal by decision. I don't have a bet on that. I'll probably stay away from that and just watch it as a fan because, you know, it's hard to really say you got a really good lean on that fight because these dudes are going to be throwing blows and Probably somebody's going to go out, but I don't know, man. No bets on that, though, but I am going to watch that as a fan. Fight number 11 is in the women's flyweight division. It's for the tough finale. We got Juliana Pena versus Brogan Walker, or Juliana Pena, Juli Juliana Miller. Sorry, Juju. Juliana Miller is 2-1, and one, currently sitting at minus 135. Brogan Walker is 7-2, and two, currently sitting at plus 115. And this is going to be a scrap, dude. This Juliana Miller, she is a crazy pace girl. Like, this girl is constantly doing something. Her only problem is she doesn't have very much power. Um, she's really tall and skinny. She's 5'7 with a 67-inch reach, where Brogan Walker's 5'4 with a 67-inch reach. So, Brogan, like, Juliana Miller is tall, skinny, great pace, not very physically strong. She has good jujitsu, but she has no takedowns to get it there. Like she'll grab a girl in the clinch and just try to like pull her down, but she's not very strong. So, but she does have a good clinch as far as throwing some like knees, um, a lot of punches. She throws a nice long jab um, and that she like leans into standing up. I like that. But uh, she, if she does get taken down, she's got super active off her back with arm bars and triangles. Um, her fights are all action, man. She Every second, she's doing something, coming forward, doing something. But like I said, she's just throwing pitter-patter. Uh, Brogan Walker, dude, is is good, man. I was watching both these girls. I've watched their tough fights. I went by, back and watched some regional fights, dude. Brogan Walker's tough. She has a win over Miranda Maverick. Her two losses are to uh, Pro Gonzalez, which you know was a big veteran for her at the time. She was like 6-0. and And then um, Aaron Blanchfield, who she went to decision with. And we see Blanchfield is a savage. Brogan Walker, man, nice, patient, accurate striking, which I think she's going to use here because Juju never stops throwing her her really light pitter pat punches where Brogan Walker is going to be able to counter that with big shots. Um really straight left counter um that's fast and powerful nice right hook and counter right hook um she seems to be very physically strong in the clinch too that's what i noticed in her couple of fights she was uh, out grappling miranda maverick and landing the takedowns on her she's got really good cardio went three hard rounds with all them girls really nice ground and pound has really nice bjj and submission defense muay thai background and brown belt and bjj this girl's really well-rounded, really good. She's going to be way more physically stronger than Juliana Miller. Um, I really like Brogan Walker here by decision. I really do. She's got way more experience than Miller, um, and she's going to be the stronger fighter, the better more, better technique on everything. She has better wrestling, better BJJ, and better striking, in my opinion. She's just got to keep up with the pace of uh, Juju, man, and um, I think she's going to be able to. I'm going to take Brogan Walker. I'm going to take her by decision. That's the fourth girl underdog on this card I've picked. I don't think I'm going to actually get to the uh, – this is kind of way too low level for me to bet but um i like brogan walker by decision man she's she's better than this girl everywhere and uh more experience too so like i said she's been in there with miranda maverick aaron blanchfield these girls are already top of the line at the ufc this other girl's two and one hasn't been in there with anybody so uh i don't know how that girl's the favorite to be honest 
Fight number 12 is in the men's heavyweight division, and this is the men's tough heavyweight final. We got Zach Puaga, 5-0, currently sitting at minus 235 versus Mohamed Usman, 7-2, um, excuse me, sitting at plus 200. And um, it's going to be like kind of a sloppy heavyweight fight. Both these dudes are pretty good, but it's they're pretty sloppy. Zach Puaga, 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 um, He's good. He's undefeated. Pretty good striking. Really nice takedown defense. Uh, he had good speed and movement on the uh, for a heavyweight because he used to fight at light heavyweight. He fought Marcus Perez, actually, uh, the old UFC dude at light heavyweight. So coming up to heavyweight, he's very agile. He's small, though, man. He's only six foot. Well, I don't know his reach, but he's got long arms. But um, he's small for heavyweight, but he's fast, and he still keeps some power. He's got really good boxing. That's really all he uses, man. Um, good boxing, fast hands, uh, nice uh, right hand, uppercut, hook, and overhand. That's what he knocked out the second guy with in the uh, ultimate fighter and um just look good man super tough show good cardio <clears throat> well-rounded um but he did kind of seem to wear down as the fights went with these bigger guys especially in the second uh our first fight you know he he got taken down a couple times and it seemed like he wore out but the other guy also wore out too um muhammad usman kamara usman's brother this dude's a true heavyweight, man. He's 6'2 with a 79-inch reach, which is, which is a long reach, and he's a big, thick boy, man. Um, pretty good striking. Pretty good overhand right. I mean, he's not Kamara with the wrestling, but he's got decent wrestling. Um, pretty nice left hook and check left hook. He likes to come forward and, and, and uh, get guys up against the cage and throw bombs at him when he's got him trapped up against the cage, which I like. And he throws power, man and everything he throws, but he seems like he has good cardio. His last fight in the UFC uh, Ultimate Fighter against... Um, the one uh, bigger Mexican guy that was like 6'6 six, six was, a, was a, a pretty good war, and he kept good pace and good cardio the whole time. His chin seems to check out. Um, he's going to have a size and toughness advantage in this. I know Pauga is going to have faster hands in that first round, but when they kind of start slowing down in that second and third, man, um, I can see Usman taking over. I could see Usman landing some takedowns in this fight too because he's going to be a lot bigger. He's going to be a lot bigger and heavier. I bet he's going to have, you know, 10, 15, 20 pounds on Paul when they when they fight. Give me Muhammad Usman, man. I'm going to take him by decision. I'm going to say that he actually lands some takedowns, uses his uh, size and power advantage, lands some bigger shots. He's going to be throwing the harder power. Like I said, first round might be tough when Paul is a little more faster than him throwing them straight shots. But by the time they both slow down and get to the same speed, Usman's going to be throwing more power. And like I said, if he can land some takedowns, Get that big body on Pauga. He's he can be able to wear him down too, and um, maybe get a finish, but definitely take some of the sting out of Pauga's punches when they're up. So yeah, man, give me Usman, man, more experience and uh, bigger guy. Main event fight number thirteen is in the men's light heavyweight division. We got Tiago Santos versus Jamal Hill. Tiago Santos is twenty two and ten, currently sitting at plus two forty. Jamal Hill's ten and one, currently sitting at minus two eighty. And uh, Tiago Santos, man. I don't know what to say. He used to be good. Um, he used to be really, really aggressive fighters. 38 years old now. Um, used to have really good aggressive Muay Thai striking. Good takedown defense. KO power. Nice kicks. All that. But he blew both of his knees out against John Jones and has not been the same since, man. 38 years old. No knees. I tried to go back and watch his last three fights. He's fought three main events in a row, five round fights. And I, will, I refuse to watch 75 minutes of what happened in any of them fights any of them man uh if you go back against ink alive terrible you go back against johnny walker terrible dude uh i forget the other one another terrible fight who was it uh his last fight a uh, ratsick terrible fights them were three of the worst fights I, I refuse to watch them again man 75 minutes ain't, ain't gonna do it no way jamal hill hands bro this dude is so good this dude's the up and coming guy excellent boxing he's gonna have two inches of height three inches of reach excellent boxing crazy power in his right hand from either stance he's he he when he switches into southpaw and he throws that right jab boom that right right jab and right hook from a southpaw stance are crazy crazy powerful um that's what that's uh that's what he was hitting uh, um who who was it uh killed somebody with that not, not johnny walker because when he killed johnny walker he switched into the right hand stance and threw the overhand right um um when he, or no yeah 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 throw the overhand right um straight left and overhand left are lethal shown excellent takedown defense really good forward pressure in that johnny walker fight they fought in the small cage and he put so much pressure on him. johnny walker didn't have no room to let off leg kicks johnny walker didn't have no room to do nothing man really nice body punches um really so like i said excellent at switching stances he throws some kicks he could throw a head kick but um he's mainly boxing and that's all this dude needs takedown defense and his boxing is going to be enough to win a lot of fights man and i think he wins this um 
you know, Tiago Santos has a way too of coming out in that first round and, and, and guys come out aggressive against him and he can sting them with a couple shots. And I think that's why these last three fights of his have been boring because he'll sting them guys with a couple shots and then he'll count, uh, uh, he'll faint the rest of the fight and, you know, they'll just do a, just enough to win, but also not put themselves in any danger. So I don't know if that happens here, man. Jamal Hill is such an action fighter that I think he's going to force the fight and I think he's going to put hands on Santos. Santos isn't easy to knock out though, but um, if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Jamal Hill, man. So I'm going to take Jamal Hill and I'm going to take him by second or third round TKO. This ain't going to be one of them boring uh, five round main events, man. I think t I think Jamal Hill gets on him, gets that finish. I got Jamal Hill right now parlayed with uh, Sergey Spivak. I like Jamal Hill as a huge lock. I may anchor another um, parlay with him, man. That's been working out for me the last two weeks. I anchored two parlays uh, with uh, Mark Dia Casey and Molly McCain in London. I anchored two parlays with Mohammed uh, or uh, Magomed Ankalaev last week. They all helped. Really, uh, I really feel um, like I'm gonna hit this card, but like I said, I'm betting low. Um, there's too many variables on on this card, man. It's got four women's fights on it, for Christ's sakes, dude. Uh, best safe on this fight, man. Everybody, please, man. I know you like and subscribe. I know you like this video, so like it, man. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I know you're gonna watch my next week's video after I keep winning. That's what we do. So come on, man. I gotta brag a little bit. You guys know I never really talk no crap on here, and uh, I don't like to brag a lot, but I'm gonna brag on this. So five and zero. Oh. Plus 9.1 units, almost up 50 units. Come on, man. Hit the like and subscribe button. Um, check me out this Wednesday on my channel. Me and Johnny K Picks are going to go live. We'll have some good shows. Got some other good news coming up, too. I tell everybody, like, here in a week or two. But uh, got some really good news. Got a, got a good offer in this fight game to go on a good show. So I'll bring that up. But, man, I appreciate, as always, everybody, man, you guys coming out, checking out my show. Um, Good luck, everybody, this weekend. Um, good luck with all your bets, man. Uh, come check me out on Instagram, too, if you want to see some of my bet stubs because I won't do my official bets video till Thursday or Friday, and I'll post bet stubs every day of the week on um, Instagram. I started getting on Twitter, too, uh, recently, so if you want to check me out on there, it's Blood Money MMA Bets, so check me out there, too. All right, man, appreciate all you guys watching. I will catch you later. See ya.